What's up, everyone? This is Duke Dodson from Graybos, and you're listening to the Sports Card Strategy Show, part of the NoOffSeason.com Sports Card Network. And remember, there is no offseason. This is Mark Aaron from WSB Radio in Atlanta, and you are listening to the Sports Card Strategy Show, part of the NoOffSeason.com Sports Card Network, the number one place for advice on how to make money flipping sports cards. Thanks for tuning in, and remember, there is no offseason. What's up, everybody? I'm Paul Hickey with NoOffSeason.com. This is the Sports Card Strategy Show brought to you by Graybo's Sports Cards. Graybo's Sports Cards is a local card shop located in Richmond, Virginia, and is owned by Gray Burnett, Ryan Fitz, and Duke Dodson, who you know is Denny one time. Graybo's sports the best selection of singles in the mid-Atlantic and a wide variety of wax. Graybo's is happy to announce that they are now the only direct buyer of Topps Bowman in Central Virginia and are now breaking daily on Fanatics Live. They are moving to their new larger shop, which will be connected to the hottest sports bar in Richmond in the near future. Stay tuned for those details. Listeners of Sports Card Strategy Show can use the promo code GRAYBOS20 to get $20 off their first purchase with Graybo's on Fanatics Live. Don't forget to get a free 30-day trial at NoOffSeason.com today to help you make money flipping sports cards, build your sports card investment portfolio, get unlimited advice from our experts, and take sports card school to navigate the hobby. That's NoOffSeason.com. Get your free 30-day trial today. All the data we use on the Sports Card Strategy Show is from MarketMoversApp.com. Use code NOOFFSEASON at MarketMoversApp.com to get 20% off for life after a free 14-day trial. All right, let's get to the Sports Card Strategy. What's up, what's up, everybody? I'm Paul Hickey with NoOffSeason.com. Welcome to the Sports Card Strategy Show. This is not an April Fool's Day episode, even though it is April Fool's. I may or may not tell you about one of my all-time April Fool's Day pranks. The live chat will have to tell me whether or not they want to hear about it. But on today's show, we will definitely talk about adjusting our sales strategies with upcoming sell markers, how to make money during the NBA playoffs, We'll have an exclusive interview with the SVP of CCG, Certified Collectibles Group, about the JSA acquisition. We'll talk about whether or not there's still money on the table for Caitlin Clark cards. And we'll announce the winner of a $250 Graybo's gift card. Of course, we'll speak directly to members of our NoOffSeason.com family and answer your questions. Live chat love, let's get into it. First up is Luke Menchel. What's going on? Happy Monday, April Fool's Day. Don't get fooled. I got fooled back in the day. Drop a uh, comment in the live chat if you guys want to hear my April Fool's Day story at the end of the show. Brandon French, it's go time. What's up, TWS Sports Cards? Let's go, baby. Gabe Davis, happy Easter Monday. That's right, it is Easter Monday because, uh, you know, if you are working a full-time job for a corporation, chances are you you have today off for Easter Monday. So congratulations on that. Yo to Bo Belcher, Barry Siff, Monday morning madness. Yeah, a lot of madness yesterday and over the weekend in the NCAA tournament. Justin Stewart in the house. Old money. Yo, yo, yo. Off work this week. And get to listen live, listening during my leg day lift. That's awesome. Leg day. I figure most of you uh, are doing other things instead of looking at my face. So good to know that uh, old money's uh, working on those legs. Happy Monday to Shane Graham. Uh, Randy Ferguson. Greeny Green. And Facebook user, tell us who you are there, Facebook user, because StreamYard does not let us know. All right, everybody, definitely drop your L's and dubs in the live chat, along with any questions that you have. 
We're going to answer and shout you out at the end of the show. And of course, if you like the content we're putting out on a daily, weekly basis, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe at youtube.com slash Paul Hickey. It helps us out a lot. We know many of you consume the Sports Card Strategy Show on the podcast app, but if you can make it over to youtube.com slash Paul Hickey, we would surely appreciate it. And of course, you can join the Discord at sportscardstrategy.com to participate in conversation as well. Are you ready to start grading your cards? CGC is the perfect place to slab your favorite sports cards. From their crystal clear holders to their affordable pricing, CGC Cards is the perfect stop for your grading needs. Go to cgccards.com to start grading today. But guys, I got to tell you, we talk about PSA all the time and we talk about how we grade all of our sports cards at PSA because they bring the most value on the secondary market. Not only do they bring the most value, but it's by far the most sales volume for PSA cards because I dropped a new show right here on the feed, debuted today. This is not an April Fool's Day joke. There actually is a new show. Every Monday, we are going to be looking at the baseball card market. So there is a baseball card market update debut show at youtube.com slash Paul Hickey and on the Sports Card Strategy Show podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. Baseball card market update. We're going to do it weekly on Mondays, but don't worry, basketball, football, soccer, hockey, F1, golf, college, card fans. We are going to be doing a weekly show for all of those that I just mentioned. Tomorrow's weekly show will be the basketball card market update. So let me know what you think of those shows. Mark D is in the live chat, says, love the new show. Paul, excellent job and info. Really appreciate that. Jordan Houlette in the house. What's up, Jordan? Jordan, I met you at Culture Collision. I remember. Um, Jordan, uh, it's in there. Soccer is probably going to be rotated in on Thursdays with some of the other sports like golf, hockey, F1. Barry Siff, like the baseball card market show this morning. Appreciate the love, everybody, on the new show. Um, we're just adding more and more content here at the NoOffSeason.com Sports Card Network. Guys, you know, if you missed the news earlier on in the year, on, on uh, January 2nd, I announced that I was leaving all of my other ventures and, and, and jobs and everything and businesses to go all in only on nooffseason.com and the Sports Card Strategy Show. And because I'm doing that, because I'm earning a living flipping sports cards and creating content about it, I get to bring you guys more content here on the network, on the feed. So I'm pumped about that. But, but on the baseball card market update, this is why I brought it up. On the baseball card market update, I dropped a nugget, a great nugget, that 20 out of the top 20 graded cards over the last 14 days in baseball cards, they were all PSA cards. 18 out of the top 20 were all PSA 10s. This is based on sales volume. So it, it's pretty incredible that, you know, how big of a stranglehold PSA has on the market. But we're actually going to talk about that with Ralph Russo, the SVP of CCG, Certified Collectibles Group. Uh, which oversees CGC Cards, which is a nooffseason.com network partner. All right, Sports Card School is a safe place for newbies, advanced flippers, and high rollers alike to learn how to navigate the hobby and ultimately build a collection that increases in value. Go to sportscardschool.com. Get a free 30-day trial now at nooffseason.com to start learning our guidelines, strategies, and plays to help you make money flipping sports cards to fund your PC and other things in your life. And speaking of guidelines, strategies, and plays, I want to know what your selling strategy is. And I know it's going to depend on a number of factors, but this leads us into the question of the day today. Buy a now or best auction. Bin or... OBO or auction? Buy it now or auction is the question of the day. Drop a comment below at youtube.com slash Paul Hickey and comment on our pinned post on Instagram. We would love to hear from you at Sports Card Strategy on IG. Participate in our question of the day. A, because it's interesting to interact with the nooffseason.com family. The nooffseason.com family is 
showing up to help each other make money flipping sports cards and have fun in the hobby and make the right decisions in the hobby because we want to make the right decisions to help people stay in the hobby. Nobody wants to lose money. Maybe you'll break even from time to time, but overall, you're going to make money flipping sports cards. And I want you to interact with your fellow NoOffSeason.com family members. If you're listening on Apple and Spotify, you've never been able to join the live chat. You never comment on YouTube. It's fine. Go to Instagram when you have time. Follow at Sports Card Strategy. Comment on our question of the day. I want to know, buy it now or auction. So I'm excited to talk about this topic with you guys today a little bit more because I'm adjusting my selling strategy quite a bit. Um, I've talked mainly about how much success I've had in seven or 10 day auctions at a selling marker. And I still think it's important that you, you have to buy a card with a selling marker in mind. You have to. You have to. Because if you don't have a selling marker in mind, chances are you're just grasping at straws. You're just thinking, oh, this card, that seems good for $100. I think that's going to go up to $150 one day. Well, why do you think that? What on earth is leading you to believe just because you have a gut feeling about something that you're going to be right? That's called gambling. That's called sports betting. I don't like that. I like mitigating risk. I like you guys making money. I like you guys staying in the hobby. And because of that, I say you need to only buy cards with a selling marker in mind. Now, sometimes a selling marker can be the hype rise leading up to a season. You know, that happens. We've got the Masters coming up in a couple of weeks. There's going to be hype around some golfers. John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler, they have Sports Illustrated for Kids rookie cards. Okay? So if you bought those cards over the last year, now would be a good time to sell them at that selling marker. The NFL Draft, that's a huge one that we've been talking about on the Sports Card Strategy Show for a long time. We've got guys like Caleb Williams that we've been buying forever. We've been buying his 2022 Bowman Chrome first cards, his refractors, his autos. We've been getting them graded at PSA. We've been buying them graded. Now it's time to sell them at the selling marker. Those are just a couple examples, right? We, we dove further in last week's Wednesday show with Connor, who's in the lab on Mondays. And we, we dive deep in the overflow show, the premium pot. So if you're not a premium member at nooffseason.com and you need some specialized advice, you can get a free trial right now at nooffseason.com. Submit an unlimited amount of questions to the overflow show. Connor and I answer them every Friday. So we dive into your specific situation. It's all about your specific situation as to whether or not you should do a buy it now or an auction, a bin OBO. OBO, for those of you who don't follow me, is or best offer. So if you're listing on eBay, you've got, you've got those different options. You've got buy it now or best offer or a seven or 10 day auction. Now, I've talked often on the Sports Card Strategy Show about the pros and cons of each. I like the auction because at the selling marker, in theory, there should be hype around a specific player. There should be hype around a specific card. We'll talk. I talked earlier on in the baseball card market show, market update show, earlier today about a particular card, the Jackson Churio 2022 Bowman Chrome First Prospect PSA 10. That card is like leading the way in terms of sales volume. It's not leading the way in terms of pricing. And I'll talk about my hypothesis on that in a second. But it's a super liquid card. So the 7 to 10 day auction will ensure that your card sells. It'll ensure that your card sells for fair market value. And if the market dictates that that card is hot, that player is hot, 
that player is investable, that card could spike huge in pricing at the selling marker based on hype. So we've seen this happen a lot. Now, the buy it now or best offer is a little bit less risky. In an auction, you can get crushed. Buy it now or best offer also helps you mitigate risk, but it doesn't ensure that you're going to move the card. The card may not move, which can be frustrating. So we'll, we'll dive in here in a second to my orders on eBay. I just want to use my orders as an example to walk you guys through what's been happening on my selling strategy. I want you guys to drop comments and questions in the live chat about your selling strategies. And of course, I want you to ask on the overflow show at nooffseason.com slash ask so we can dig in deep. And then I want to talk about my listings because I think orders are one thing that's in the past. Listings are another. Listings are how have I learned from the past and what am I doing now based on that, okay? And then we'll probably get into Paul's pickups real quick before we segue into how to make money during the NBA playoffs. Okay, so real quick, in terms of my current orders that I have, that have that have been paid for that I've shipped out to buyers. Now, these are all you you guys have been waiting for me to say it, right? Like those of you who know the show and those of you who are part of the nooffseason.com fam, you've been waiting for me to say it. These are all what the right card for the right player at the right time. My guy Tim Larson from Signs of the Times Collectibles texted me over the weekend and said, "Paul, you need to make a t-shirt." for nooffseason.com that says the right card for the right player at the right time. Let me know if you think Tim's right on that one. But these are all the right card for the right player at the right time. These are all desirable cards. We talk about this at Sports Card School a lot. We talk about this on the Premium Pod a lot. So let's start with that card that I talked about on the Baseball Card Market Update show earlier today, which you can get at youtube.com slash paulhickey. You can listen to it on the Sports Card Strategy Show feed. It's there. Jackson Churio 2022 Bowman Chrome first prospect card PSA 10. I bought a ton of these for around $55 a piece last year. The selling marker was the call up. You'll hear us say that the selling marker with baseball prospects is the call up. Why? Because that's when that player is in the news media and there's a lot of anticipation around their MLB debut for the first time. This is a first time call up. These are not players who have been in the MLB, been sent down and then recalled up because there's not that much hype around that. These are, these are players that have a sell marker of they've never been called up before. They're going to get called up for the first time ever. Jackson Churio Broke camp with the Brewers. It was announced. It was announced during the first weekend of the NCAA tournament. And I said, go ahead and list all of your Jackson Cheerio cards in seven or 10 day auctions because you're going to get the benefit of the call up hype. You're going to get the benefit of his MLB debut. You're going to get the benefit of a performance spike. If he does have a perform have a solid performance in his first MLB series, his debut, and then in the following two games against the Mets. Now, I still stand by this, guys. I still stand by this, but Jackson Churio's prices didn't move the way that I thought they would move. So it was a bit of an L for me. And it might have been a bit of an L for any of you who followed me on this play because we sent out a sell alert. So if you text sports cards to 1-833-992-5727, we sent out a sell alert for Jackson Churio. And we sent it out back when the call-up announcement happened that he broke camp with the Brewers. Now, slight problem. People were filling out their March Madness brackets. This wasn't a call-up announcement like Jackson Holiday is probably going to get in the next month or two, where it could be in its own news cycle. So Jackson Churio and Wyatt Langford, who is another one, 
that we talked about. 2023 Bowman draft Chrome cards. They didn't get as quite as much hype. So, out of all of my Jackson Cheerio 2022 Bowman Chrome first prospect PSA 10s, I had like seven or eight of them. Guys, I was I was slightly under. I was slightly under because they all moved for about the same price that I bought them for. But when you take out eBay fees and shipping, I was slightly under on the most liquid card, the most liquid baseball graded card over the past 14 days. So that's an L. Now on the Jackson Churio 2022 Bowman Chrome First Prospect Auto PSA 10 that I bought at the National for $500, I sold that for $664.01. Now that auction ended on Friday. Friday was supposed to be Jackson Churio's second game as a Major League Baseball player. Well, Thursday's opening game was postponed. So I actually didn't get the benefit that I thought I was going to get based on the schedule. Now, am I going to sit here and blame the weather, blame Major League Baseball, blame the NCAA tournament? No, I got to blame myself, right? I got to blame myself. So I was wrong. I mean, I netted $50 after holding this card for nine months. I could have sold it at the National. I could have flipped it at the National for $650 to one of the vendors there. I bought it for $500. I could have flipped it for $650 and been out of it. Now, I would have been a little bit nervous the entire year because I thought this, like, this card sold for $1,000 in February, guys. This card sold for $800 in March a couple of times. Why, oh, why did it sell for $664 after the call-up announcement? During the hype, which you think would be the hype of the Major League Baseball season. So, you know, I, I can come up with all these different reasons why I think it didn't sell for what it probably should have sold for. And I've already listed off a few. But the takeaway here is, if, you, if you've got a big card and you don't want to get crushed on it, you probably want to sell it in a buy it now or best offer. And you probably want to go ahead and list it a little bit early. Like I probably should have listed my this Jackson Cheerio card, the auto, the 2022 Bowman Chrome First Prospect Auto PSA 10. I probably should have listed it, buy it now or best offer back in February. Maybe I would have sold it for that $1,000. Maybe I would have sold it for that $800. So if you, the good news is if you've got the right card for the right player at the right time, you should always at least break even. You should profit the 10 to 20% that I ended up profiting on this card. And then you're always going to have the upside still of the 50%, the 100%, the 3X, et cetera. Because these aren't the only sales of that card. There are people that made money off of this play. And, there, and, and I made money off the Wyatt Langford play. So it's the same play. It's the same guidelines and strategies, rather, because we use the guidelines and the strategies. In this case, buy Bowman Chrome first prospect autos of the top three to five prospects, prospects on the MLB top 100. Have them graded at PSA. Sell them at the call-up. I did that for both of these guys, Churio and Langford. On Langford's card, I netted more money. I sold it for $410. I bought it for $300. So on the Langford card, I netted $34, which is a higher percentage than the $50 that I netted on the Churio. And, and I'm above water. I'm making money. So. While I want, while I really thought I'd have an opportunity to 2X the Cheerio, I needed to adjust my selling strategy, which is the theme of today's show. So what have I done moving forward? Let's get into that. If we get into my current eBay listings, I've got a lot more bin OBOs. 
So this goes back to the question of the day. Rather than just go all in on all these seven to 10 day auctions at the selling marker, I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm starting a bin OBO first, a couple weeks or even months prior to the selling marker, just to see if I can move it. Why not field offers? And if you list the bin OBO at 2X or 3X and somebody bins it, then you 2X and 3X, which is your what you're trying to do at the selling marker anyway in the auction. So Connor and I talk a lot about mitigating risk. So I'm just trying to mitigate risk here even further. So if you look at my auctions, I've got another, sorry, if you look at my listings, I've got another of the same card, the 2022 Bowman Chrome first prospect, Jackson Churio auto. I've got it listed in a bin OBO. And why not? I've got it listed at $1,300. Buy it now. Now I'm fielding best offers that I'd probably take closer to 800 or 1,000. Now somebody's probably looking at my most recent comp of 664 going, screw this guy. But I don't care. Jackson Churio played really freaking well over the weekend and the, the Brewers are playing very well also. So, he and he's second in NL odds for Rookie of the Year behind Yoshinobu Yamamoto. So, I'm not auctioning this off. I'm holding it. I've got Drake London, 2022 National Treasures, RPA, first off the line, Silver Rookie Patch Auto, out of 25, BGS 8. I've got my Darius Garland Kaboom, 2019, BGS 9.5. I've got, get ready for it, my, a lot of Caleb Williams cards. Caleb Williams is a guy that we should all be profiting from this month. But he's also a guy that we don't want to get crushed on. And he's a guy that could stay relevant through August with these college cards. These college cards could stay relevant through August. So I've got 2023 Caleb Williams Bowman U Chrome Autograph PSA 9 listed in a buy it now or best offer. I've got a 2023 Bowman U Chrome Sapphire Caleb Williams Yellow out of 75 listed. I've got a 2023 Bowman U Chrome Caleb Williams 1955 style autograph out of 99 SGC 1010 listed. I've got a Bo Nix 2022 Bowman U Chrome Prospect Auto Orange Refractor out of 25 PSA 10. Listed, bin OBO. And I've priced these at a, a point where I could probably close to 2X if somebody binned it. And I've priced these where if somebody makes an offer that I like, I'm going to probably net about 30% after fees, which is phenomenal. Like if I can net 30% after fees on everything I do, that's great. I don't have to 2X. I don't have to 3X because I'm buying the right card for the right player at the right time. So in theory, every single one of my cards, I should be in a position to profit 30% after fees. And if I'm doing that, it's probably going to even out to close to the same thing as breaking even on a lot of them and 2Xing on a lot of them as well on seven to 10 day auctions. So the point is, Different strokes for different folks. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is because it all should work as long as you have the right card for the right player at the right time. It all should work if you sell at the selling marker or you list in a bin OBO leading up to the selling marker. I don't want you to get crushed in your auctions. That's why I'm bringing this up. So I want you to look, how much are you into each card? If you're already up based on current market value, and where you bought in at, you're probably going to do well on a seven to 10 day auction. So you could go that route and pit people up against each other based on the hype. If you're not up, then I would say you probably want to list in a buy it now or best offer and keep it in that scenario through the selling marker, just so that during the selling marker, you're going to get more bites. You're going to get more offers. You're going to get more watch list ads, which means you can send offers to people. 
Now, this is listed on eBay. There's, of course, other marketplaces. There's Mercari. There's My Card Post. There's My Slabs. There's listing, you know, social media groups, discords. There's in-person transactions. And there's inventory management software now, like Mascot and Cronosio, we've talked about on the show, that allow you to list in multiple spots all at once. So eBay has by far the most sales volume. It's not even close. They have by far the most listings, by far the most sales volume. I've listed all that data out at Sports Card School. That's why I talk about eBay the most often. So I'm I'm big into helping you guys with the selling strategy because I think that's how you make your money. You make your money first buying in at the right time with the right card and the right player. But second, you got to sell strategically at the right time. And don't be afraid now to sell early. Spread it out a little bit. I think maybe the reason why I didn't profit on my base Jackson Churio PSA 10s is the same reason why it was the most liquid card over the last 14 days. Because of the supply flooding the market. So... Kudos to all of you who are out there already doing that. Just wanted to put a bug in your ear about how to sell. All right, now let's do a quick version of Paul's pickups before we get into a segment from Gary from Hoops and Cards, how to make money during the NBA playoffs. So here's my recent pickups. And at nooffseason.com, everybody, Connor and I are going to add more detail to the player profiles. So we've got player rankings at nooffseason.com. For those of you who don't know, I think we're the only place that you can find sports card rankings. Sports card rankings by player. And then when you click into each player, how to make money on their cards and their profile, you see the cards that we recommend buying. You see a snipe price. You see a timing to buy and and a selling marker. So you basically get like a turnkey way to make money flipping sports cards by going to nooffseason.com. But I think we're going to start breaking it up on each player profile page and breaking up different opportunities. So right now we've got a lot of opportunities that are turnkey, like buy this PSA 10. Right now we've got some raw to grade opportunities. And I think we're going to add some crack and submit. So you see here in Paul's pickups, I'm picking up a lot of graded Carson Beck autos out of 2023 Bowman. I just got a 2023 Bowman U Chrome Carson Beck orange refractor out of 25 SGC nine. Why not get an orange refractor out of 25 auto of Carson Beck? Who's probably going to be going into now. I don't care what actually happens. I'm, I care about the hype going into the season. So going into the college football season, he's going to be like the number one ranked college QB for Georgia. So $222. Then I got a PSA 10. I I think I'm most excited about this. A 2023 Bowman U Chrome refractor out of 499 first auto PSA 10. $275 for that. That's nuts. And then I mentioned the raw to grade opportunities a minute ago. Victor Wembenyama picked up three Victor Wembenyama, 2023-24, Panini Prism, 136s. The market's cooling on the raw price for that. And guys, it's a high gem rate. You can find, the gem rate's like 62%. You can find a lot of these that are well-centered. Now, you don't know if they're going to gem or not. But you can find a lot of Wembys that are well-centered. So 91, 97, and 85. So it'd be 90, 102, and 97 all in on those, including the shipping. Just add about five or six bucks for the shipping. So I'm pumped. About to make a big PSA submission soon. And let's just hit my watch list. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna peel back the layers here on the sports card strategy show. Give you guys my watch list. So there's a lot of Shadur Sanders. I've been on record. But the new Shadur Sanders that I'm I'm watching are the 2023 Bowman Chrome U Sapphire Collections cards. 
Because as more and more Shadur cards hit the market, you want to be careful not to continuously buy into the same cards because the prices are going up on Shadur. Like the prices are already going up on Shadur. So I'm, I've already, I'm already right on my Shadur Sanders call. And so I've always said list at the selling marker in seven to 10 day auctions, which for him would be the 2025 NFL draft. But now what am I doing, guys? I'm doing what I said a minute ago that everybody should do. You should learn from your experience. I'm going and I'm, I'm checking the market on a daily basis with my Shadur cards. And I'm thinking, should I divest a little bit? Should I move out of some of my Shadur Sanders while they're all up? They're moving up. But I think they're going to continue to move up. So I'm not doing it yet. Because I'm going to move my Caleb Williamses, my Drake Mays, my Bo Nixes. I'm going to move all of them next. And then I'm going to start to look to move my Shadours when there's some hype for the start of the 2024 college football season. But right now, I'm adding a lot of these to my watch list. Like Shadour Sanders 2023 Bowman Chrome University Gold Sapphire out of 50 SGC 10, right? Like Shadour Sanders... 2023 Bowman Chrome University Gold Refractor. Like this one, which is super interesting. I'm almost buying it, but I've got an offer on it to buy it for about $25 less. I'm 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 thinking I'm going to pull the trigger on this 2023 Bowman U Sapphire Shadur Sanders Gold Refractor out of 50. This is the Sapphire Edition Selections and it's a PSA 10. And yeah, I've also got a lot of Travis Hunter added. But this Sapphire Gold Selections out of 50 has me thinking. Could be the right card. Could be an alternate version of the right card. I say the right card for the player at the right time, but really, guys, we all know there's more than one right card for a player. Come on. We know that. So I've listed more cards earlier in bin or best offer rather than just waiting for auctions. When you have the right card for the right players at the right time, you'll get offers at the right time. So I'm excited about this. I think it's it's not totally an L that the, the auctions aren't always two and three Xing. I think that the auctions, worst case scenario, are going to be a break even. But more often than not, they're going to net you 20 to 30%, even when the hype cycle doesn't yield what you thought it was going to yield. So you're still going to make money. But if, but I think you should mitigate that a little bit and increase your chances to make more money earlier on with the buy it now or best offer, which I did with a Michael Penix. So this is what I wanted to tell you guys. I listed a Michael Penix Jr. 2023 Bowman Chrome Big Kahuna Auto Auto 150 PSA 9. I was 120 all into that card. I listed it for 225. Buy it now or best offer. On Saturday morning, I went for my run. I came back from my run. I had an offer for 200. I accepted it. So I net profited. What did I net profit on the Penix? I net profited on the Penix, all in, all out, $55.12 at very little effort, $55.12. And so that's why I'm talking about the Knicks. That's why I'm talking about the Williams. I want you guys to get in and get out. If you want to wait for the selling marker, I don't hate that either. But I think it depends on each individual scenario on a per card basis. Okay. Okay. So we've got breaking news before we get into the, how to make money during the NBA playoffs. Thanks to Brendan Lindgren in the live chat. Brendan Lindgren says breaking news. Dylan Cruz will have a Bowman auto this year. Fade the stars and stripes play. Love it. Brendan, thanks for the info. Really appreciate you. We've talked about the Panini Kaboom, uh, the Panini Kaboom uh, U.S. National Team Stars and Stripes licensed as a play for Dylan Cruz. Might not make money on that one anymore. I don't think you'll lose money, but you might not make money 
because of this news. So if you've got the stars and stripes, you might want to list it now and a buy it now or best offer. Great timing on that, Brendan. Appreciate you. All right, let's get into how to make money during the NBA playoffs real quick with our guy, Gary. Formerly of Hoops and Cards, now of the Sports Card Strategy Show. But this is a Hoops and Cards branded segment. Gary, take it away, man. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Gary from Hoops and Cards. Excited, as usual, to uh, chime in here on the Sports Card Strategy Show. Paul, Connor, what's happening, you guys? Hey, I am just all over the NBA right now. I know it's March Madness for most of humanity right now in the college basketball tournament, but I I did my bracket, but I'm paying way more attention to NBA stuff. Got, I actually got to a card show this weekend, which was a lot of fun, even if it was just for an hour or two. You know how you lose track of time at these things. Uh, so much fun. But yeah. Here's the thing, the one thought for today that maybe as a basketball card flipper, I need to I need to put front and center as the playoffs approach, as the NBA playoffs approach, as people are talking about different positions and the play in and who's going to do what. And I, I, by the way, I'm tired of uh, the national narratives being always about the Lakers or Golden State, like fascinated to see what teams like Minnesota and OKC and even the Knicks are going to do for the first time ever. Because I think in the public opinion and at times in the card market, we are late. We are just hungry for something new. We're hungry, hungry for something new, a new accomplishment by a player, a new level or championship or award by a team. We're looking for it. Man, if Joker wins the MVP, yeah, okay, that's number three. You know, if uh, Milwaukee wins the championship, yeah, we've seen Giannis do that again, and Middleton and yay for Dame. But will their card values jump as though they have just reached a new a new floor, a new value moving forward, a new part of their legacy being written? <clears throat> I mean, maybe if LeBron somehow, but it's not just, it's not going to happen for the Lakers. I'm wondering about, is this is this the season where Jason Tatum or Anthony Edwards or the Luca and Kyrie combo? Did you guys see that that running left hand hook he made from sixteen feet over the Joker Kyrie? Big game winner the other night. That was incredible. I love the NBA, but I would be watching for if I'm looking to buy a card now or buy a player now that in six weeks, so early or mid playoffs, maybe eight weeks. It would be what player or players are going to do something brand new and have that wow factor. Yeah, you'll have the occasional somebody drops 50. Yeah, there's going to be more big nights from Wemby. He is such an amazing specimen and performer already at age, what, 20, 19, whatever he is. But are there any players that this will be their first championship, their first finals appearance, their first big moment, big shot, big points on the big stage. Those are the players. Like who's going to write the next chapter of awesomeness in their legacy? I don't know. I'm not here to make a prediction. I, I think a lot of people are expecting Jason Tatum to win a championship at some point. Maybe this is the year. I think a lot of people recognize Jamal Murray as big shot Jamal. Maybe he makes waves in the finals and averages 30 a night and hits a game winner to, to win the final? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how good Shea Gilgis Alexander is going to look in May or June, or can Jalen Brunson take the Knicks to the finals, put him along with a healthy Julius Randle and OG Ananobi and Dante and all those guys like can Jalen Brunson? I don't know. I don't know. Last year for me, it was a couple guys that that played big roles as rookies or young dudes that got prime time performances in in late May, like playoff games that matter for Caleb Martin of Miami and Christian Braun of Denver. You might find somebody in the dollar box or some rookie patch auto of a guy who's like nobody barely knows right now, but it's Sam Merrill 
or Morrell, I don't even know how to say the guy's name, Sam Merrill from the Cavs. Look, if that guy hits eight threes in a second round match against Milwaukee, guess whose cards are going to fly off on eBay? They just do. When someone makes a Sports Center front page performance and people barely know their names. So maybe you want to take a flyer on a player. Maybe you're like, man, PJ Washington. You know, maybe you're like Trey Murphy the third, who I love long term. Maybe there's a player. Maybe there's a guy that you know is capable of stepping up or is going to have to for his team to take that next level leap. I don't know. I've mentioned a variety of names, Michael Porter Jr. But that's one of the things, guys, as you are looking ahead to the playoffs. Last year, I bought a Caleb Martin rookie patch auto. I believe it was an immaculate and I uh, bought it at a card store for $15 in early May. I didn't know Caleb Martin was going to average 24 points in the second round series for Miami and have some incredible nights. And that one auction, when I auctioned off that card, it sold for over $200. I didn't know, but I just know it felt good. And I know it was because a guy that people barely knew had an affordable rookie patch auto of a good brand and happened to have an amazing playoff game or two. Who is that guy this season? Maybe you guys have some suggestions there at the show. Always love your feedback. I don't know that even a championship for Jason Tatum is going to juice up his card market. I don't know that a bunch of 40-point games from Donovan Mitchell are going to matter. But what I do know is the playoffs are going to see some guys like that rise. And a lot of guys like that say, yeah, we, we knew that guy was awesome. The, the, the price, the value is already baked into Giannis and LeBronis <laughs> and uh, what's his cheese? The Joker. Now, maybe a guy gets a bigger stage and a bigger opportunity because of injuries on his team. And that's where I won't say Tyrese Maxey's name enough. All right, so... My guy is Anthony Edwards, and I'm flag planning that if if he takes the Timberwolves one or two series into the NBA playoffs, meaning he wins one or two series, I do think we see a rise in his cards. But I'm not going to wait for that. What am I going to do? Based on the theme of this show, guys, I am going to list my 2020 Prism Silver PSA 10 for Ant-Man in a buy it now or best offer heading into the NBA playoffs and just field offers, baby. Because I'm only, why? Depends on the scenario because I'm only a couple hundred dollars into that card. So I think that it is a win-win for me. Hopefully it's a win-win for you guys. It's all about buying the right card for the right player at the right time, which is what we help you do. Let's talk more about it. But first... An exclusive interview with CCG. Senior Vice President Ralph Russo, Certified Collectibles Group. We get into a lot of great stuff here about card grading, but also the recent acquisition of James Spence Authentication, JSA. Let's go. Ralph Russo, SVP of Certified Collectibles Group, CCG. Welcome to the Sports Card Strategy Show and the NoOffSeason.com family, my man. Thank you for joining us today. I really, really appreciate you having me. Super excited to be here. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you having me on to chat about CGC. Absolutely. We met at CGC Cards headquarters not too long ago. It's great to see you again. So tell the Sports Card Strategy Show audience a little bit more about yourself and your background and what you do at CCG. Yeah, absolutely. So here at CC, uh, CCG, I'm responsible for identifying ways to enhance our current service offerings, uh, as well as grow our offerings, considering our customers' needs. So, to put that more simply, do what we do today even better than we are, even better than we are now, and do and or offer more. Um, you know, I, I love it here. I've, I've been here. I've been here at CCG uh, coming up on two years now, and you know, th the reasons why I'm you know, so engaged on a day-to-day -day basis, I think are, is really twofold. So from a business perspective, like first and foremost, no day's the same. You know, we're constantly thinking about initiatives and ways to better serve our customers, um, our customers' needs and improve their collecting experience, right? Uh, and our community is super vocal. 
So being able to interact with them on a day-to-day -day basis and get real-time feedback into how we're doing is something that's super special about, um, you know, the, about CCG as well as about the hobby in general. And then on a personal level, I love collecting and I, and I really love sports. You know, unfortunately, I'm a diehard New York Giants fan, uh, die, diehard Mets fan. You know, the Rangers have actually been, you know, not making me lose my hair recently, which is which has been nice for once. But um, but you know, marrying those two passions of mine into a career is really a dream. So it's a uh, yeah, ex exciting, it really exciting times here. Dynamic dynamic times, both for for our company as well as just for the broader market, the bar, the broader hobby overall. I won't put you on the spot and ask you what the Giants are going to do in the upcoming NFL draft, but that's something we've been talking quite a bit about here on the Sports Card Strategy Show and. And um, we've talked about CCG and CGC a lot. And we'll kind of unpack the acronyms here in a second. But we know that CCG has an incredible history of grading collectibles, including coins and comics. But we just recently learned that CGC has only been grading cards, trading cards, since 2021. Talk about CCG's growth within CGC cards and the sports vertical in particular. Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's been exponential. I mean, and I think what that really comes back to is just the fact that, you know, we're a company that's, you know, CCG, like the holding company for, for certified collectibles group, which uh, underneath which CGC operates has been in the collecting or been in the grading game for, we're coming up on 40 years now, right? So we have a tried and true process across a lot of different categories and verticals. And uh, as you mentioned, we had just recently rolled out services for cards in 2020 and 2021. And I think we know collecting, we know grading, and we know um, what our customers want because a lot, a lot of us ourselves are collectors, right? So when we kind of think about our growth trajectory and you know how we've been able to uh, kind of provide a best in class service over the course of the last couple of years since launching cards. We really ask ourselves ultimately, what is our value proposition as a grading service, right? So what do customers want out of a grading service? And it's really kind of three things in my mind, really in no particular order, but just listing them off. You really have one often confirmation of authenticity and accurate grading, um, fast turnaround times and competitive, simple and intuitive pricing. Um, so without diving too much into the weeds, a lot of our time is really focused on enhancing and excelling in our core competencies. You know, um, that we're a grading company. That's what we do. We want to give the customers what they want. Um, but there, 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 there are additional things that we can do um, to to enhance that experience. So another thing that's kind of on our radar is. Uh, and that we're focused on is, you know, collecting, as we all know, is an experience. That experience is best, best maximized when you share it with others, right? So, you know, it's why that aspect there is why the turnout to the events that we all attend is so massive. So finding ways to bring services to the collector, uh, as well as to bringing our services to un, like more underserved collecting markets that are, you know, emerging, for example, or that are just probably underserved from a grading perspective, that's something that's high on our list um, and something that we've been really focused on. You know, we just expanded um, our services internationally to the UK and, and Munich over the course of over the course of the last uh, over the course of 2023. Uh, and we've also been, you know, expanding further beyond that geographically. So between that between expansion into new markets and, you know, better serving the collector at home, as well as uh, as well as going to the events we all love, like like doing more cool things at the nationals that are on the calendar and things of that nature. That That's something we love to do. And then finally tools, you know, grading is just one part of the collecting journey. Um, so the more that we can equip customers, our customers with tools and resources, avenues to aid in their experience, of course, also something that's very high on our list. So it's been, it's it's, as I mentioned before, it's, this has all been very dynamic, I think. What we ultimately want to do is provide a best in class service from a grading perspective, but there's, there's, and, and um, that's why our customers love us and we're always looking to innovate in that way, but continuing to, uh, continuing to enhance their experience beyond what we're doing today is also something that we're very focused on. Absolutely. I think that we saw firsthand 
the quality and the consistency in the grading services and that being the primary focus makes a ton of sense. And then of course, meeting customers where they are, you mentioned uh, card shows and I experienced that firsthand as well at Culture Collision this year uh, with a lot of the CGC staff there at Culture Collision in Atlanta and you mentioned the national and then expanding into other countries in terms of markets, that's phenomenal because I think most of the hobby would agree that there is a lack of consistency when it comes to geographic regions and grading companies. There isn't a lot of access for American-based grading companies overseas. And uh, speaking of consistency, one thing I want to ask you about in a second, but I'll tee it up this way. The Sports Card Strategy Show is all about helping people make money flipping sports cards. And because PSA consistently at least currently sells better on the secondary market than just about any other grading company. I typically recommend for flippers that they go with PSA, but I have a hypothesis. We talked about this behind the scenes when we met down in Florida. I believe that since CGC cards has quickly become one of the top alternatives to PSA in just three short years for sports cards, I believe over time the value of CGC cards, CGC slabs specifically, will increase on the secondary market. A few reasons I believe this will happen. One, we talked about quality and consistent grading. We haven't talked yet about your amazing looking slabs. Anyone I ever talk to who's held a CGC slab in their hand agrees that they do look amazing. And important, no, no further changes to say the grading scale, the brand name, or the labels. And then what you just mentioned, the, the access in other countries. I think is another reason. I think now that things are locked in from a brand name, acronym, grading scale, label standpoint, uh, give me your take on my hypothesis in terms of how you believe things will happen in the secondary market for CGC cards. And, and is that important at, at any level as you look at your business plan into the future? I, I think there's no, to hit on your, your second question there, you know, I think the short answer is that like we're trends in the secondary market don't necessarily influence our business decisions. You know, we're just trying to give people access to the best grading service and best experience that they can possibly get. Um, and of course, grading in turn promotes transaction activity and liquidity in the market because you're establishing authenticity and grading in grading or end grade. Uh, and we're establishing trust among buyers and sellers and of course, protecting the item. Um, that being said, there's no question that we're mindful of the trends in the secondary market. Like, and I think the way in which fo uh, customers kind of see that bear its head in our service offerings is ultimately, what it ultimately comes down to is that we are, I kind of view us as the good house seal or the good, uh, the, the good housekeeping seal of approval for the hobby, right? Like entrusting, entrusting uh, or establishing trust among buyers and sellers ultimately. When the market's down, for example, um, the cost of grading, I think, in certain instances, can become more more uh, pricey or see more pricey become more prohibitive. Right? People start selling their cards raw. That introduces risk to the process, and then you know you have things like counter like valuable counterfeit items being exchanged on the secondary market. We want to promote the growth of the hobby, which is underpinned by trust within the hobby and trust among buyers and sellers. So. To kind of bring a long answer, uh, to, to kind of bring it bring it all the way around, we want to be responsive through our service offerings, wh whether it's through pricing or otherwise, to make sure that like we understand if our customers are, you know, experiencing headwinds, we need to be responsive to that as a grading company. Like that's a, 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 in a large part that that that's our job, right? So I, I think it's you know protecting buyers and sellers among within the market and you know keeping a keen eye on the trends within the market itself from a consistency perspective i totally agree with you like we had only we launched services for cards in early 2021 and six, since that point in time we've graded millions of cards and that's really a testament to the fact that we have such a, we have a great team that's been doing an incredible job and you know our company is built by a community of collectors within itself so we have the ability to speak to customers on a more personal level so i think my hypothesis is as we continue to focus on doing what we do best, 
and be the voice of the collector from a grading services perspective, we'll continue to, um, I think customers on the secondary market, in my opinion, will, you know, kind of see that play out in, in um, how transaction activity trends. Um, but to your point, I mean, consistency is key. Like we, we call it the brand consolidation internally, but like when we, when we merged CGC trading cards and our old brand CSG under CGC cards last July, that is a, a, um, that move was a result of effectively a year's worth of work and listening to focus groups and, you know, sanctioning surveys and things of that nature and taking just a really hard look at what we, um, have done, what we've done really well, what we can do better at and taking all of those ideas, all of that feedback, boiling them up and furnishing the product that customers see today, which is a great holder, a great label, um, great customer service and, uh, and, 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 and new benefits, uh, new and improved benefits that come with being uh, a CGC customer. So we're locked in. I mean, we feel really good about where we are today. Volume, volume strong. It's continuing to grow. And again, I think that's just a testament to all the hard work that we're putting in to make our services best in class over here. Very well said. Couldn't agree more. Ralph Russo, SVP of Certified Collectibles Group. Let's get into some big news. Since my team and I visited CGC Cards not too long ago, CCG acquired JSA. Why was it important for you from a business standpoint to acquire JSA authentication? Yeah, huge news. We've been really, really excited to share it over the course of the last few weeks. So I can put it in really simple terms. Um, custo CG CCG customers, CGC customers for a very long time have wanted, uh, ha have sought autograph authentication capabilities on our side. We unfortunately, uh, didn't have those capabilities, right? But you know, we had had those uh, services requested time and again. On the JSA side, they haven't until they haven't un until soon um, had the ability to provide their customers with encapsulation for their for their cards. For example, it's in my in my opinion, it's a perfect marriage for two companies. Like we can now cust now uh, autograph collectors as well as um, you know, existing CGC customers can come to us as a one-stop, come to us and JSA as a one-stop shop to get their autographed collectibles authenticated, uh, graded, and encapsulated. And uh, it's just a joy. It's a joy. It's a thrill to have, uh, you know, consummated the transaction. The team over there is awesome. The Spences are a household name in 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 the collecting in the sports collecting industry, right? So we have a lot of really awesome things planned. We're working really hard at Roll, at, at finding um, or establishing the right time to roll out combined services uh, for, for the two companies. And all of that's really uh, coming soon. So everybody, please stay tuned. Yeah, we will. And uh, I smiled when I saw the news because I've gotten to know the CGC Cards family and how quality their work is. And I've known about JSA authentication and their reputation. And so when I saw the acquisition, I thought, how much sense does this make where you have one quality group of people saying, hey, let's just go partner with, in this case, Acquire, you know, basically the, the household name for autograph authentication and the hobby, you know, the go-to. So uh, I'm excited to see what the combined services looks like. I know that our audience will be as well. Ralph Russo, SVP of Certified Collectibles Group. Thank you for joining us on the Sports Card Strategy Show, my man. Anything else you want to add before we let you go? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess I would just say um, thank you to everyone today that's you know, tried our services. I encourage you to give us feedback for those that haven't tried us. Give us give it give uh, CGC card grading a shot, and I you know I promise I promise you that. Uh, you won't regret it, right? We're we're locked in and we're focused on um, we're 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 focused on bringing uh, the best in class best in class grading services to the market, and we'll continue to work hard at that day in and day out. The one the one other thing that I wanted to grab you on, Paul, and maybe we do this offline is talk about the Giants draft because I do have a lot of thoughts on that as well. Okay, well, hey, throw them out there. Right? <laughs> Go for it. What are they going to do, Malik Neighbors? 
Marvin Harrison Jr.? Are they going skill position? What do you think they I don't should think, do? I, I don't think that they can. I mean, where we're where we're stuck right now is like we're locked into a contract for several more years with a quarterback that we're not really sure actually is the longer term solution. Our offensive line has been a problem since 2011. I personally think like we need to stop going for the skill positions and just beef up the line and beef and and beef up beef up the linebackers. And I know that's not like the sexy way to put it, but honestly, like now that now that Barkley went to the Eagles, which is a whole nother, you know, shot to the heart, like it's like we don't even have like kind of like that magic bullet in the backfield to, you know, pull something out of his hat and and get around what is just like, you know a brutal off probably the most brutal offensive line in the league. So I think unfortunately it's just going to be homing in on, you know, how do we, how do we improve like the, like the interior offensive line, even the left tackle position, like it's just been a revolving door at this point. So that's, um that's my take, but I've been saying that literally, like I said, for over a decade and nothing's changed yet. So I guess we'll see. I maintain that the NFL is the greatest soap opera in the world and has been for about the last 20 years. And I think the NFL draft is a perfect example of that where, I mean, just take a look at the giants from this past season and the season before that. I mean, the giants were in the playoffs, had a big upset of the Minnesota Vikings. And now all of a sudden they're in a position where they're not really sure what's happening anywhere at any of the positions. Maybe they trade down in the draft or trade back. If you will, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but, uh, Ralph, we could definitely talk anytime you want offline about uh, any of your New York teams. I'm all in. (laughs) Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much. Really appreciate your time again. Have a good one. And and again, everyone here at the Sports Card Strategy Show and the NoOffSeason.com Sports Card Network is locked in to continue to see what's going on at CGC Cards and Certified Collectibles Group. Best of luck. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, if my Detroit Lions can rebuild, then definitely the New York Giants can. So, Ralph, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Thanks again for joining us on the Sports Card Strategy Show. Speaking of card grading, guys, you know, I've mentioned this Victor Wembenyama 2023 Prism 136 base rookie card quite a bit recently, and I just got two of them in the mail and uh, opened one of them actually during... The interview that I just played with Ralph and uh, the other one I opened on Saturday, and I'm I'm convinced that the one I opened on Saturday is a PSA 10 because of the centering. And it's what I want you guys to look at when you are looking at your photos online before you buy the card, or if you're able to see a card in person, I want you to look at the centering, not only on the front and uh, left, right centering, but also look at the front top bottom centering. And then on these prisms, these 2023 prisms, look at not only the top, bottom, but the left, right centering, particularly the stat line. The stat line on these prisms, you can you can tell, you can eyeball them. Now, we, we talk about a centering tool quite a bit. At Sports Card School, there's links to the centering tool. We go in-depth at sportscardschool.com, at nooffseason.com about that. But the stat line... If you look at the card long enough, just with your eyeballs, you don't even need the centering tool. The stat line is centered on this one, and the stat line on this one is slightly off. So it'll be up to PSA as to whether or not they gem these, whether or not they give them nines. Maybe there's surface flaws that I don't see that knock them down a grade. But in my mind, one of these Wemby's is a 10. The other one is a nine, maybe a 10, depending on the grader that I get assigned to um, and how the grader wants to uh, score the centering as it relates to the overall grade uh, with the back. It's not the nameplate, but it's the stat line um, that I'm looking at on a lot of these 2023 prism basketball cards specifically, but the Wemby has a 62% gem rate. The reason I'm buying it is because while the PSA 10 is down quite a bit, It's down $151, 32% over the last 30 days. The raw price has gone down to the point where you can get a nicely well-centered, gemmable, gradable Wemby, Prism Rookie, for less than $100. 
And the PSA 10 sales price is still $313. The PSA 9 sales price is still just over $100. So worst case scenario, you eat your grading fee on a nine or even on an eight. The most recent sale of an eight is higher than the most recent sale of a nine, which tells you that there could be an anomaly sale of the eight, or it tells you that the market still really hasn't shooken out yet on this PSA 8, PSA 9, but I feel pretty solid about where the market is going to end up on the 10. I wouldn't buy into the graded 10 just yet. If I were you guys, I would go raw to grade, but I think you can get a lot of these well-centered ones. All right, I wanted to throw that little nugget in there of what to look for on these online photos of the prism cards that you might be buying to grade for Victor Wembenyama. Up next, we're going to hear from one of our audience members about whether or not there's still money on the table for Caitlin Clark cards. Caitlin Clark has obviously been a hot commodity in, in all of basketball. She's got an offer from Ice Cubes Pro League to play for $5 million. Maybe she could still play in the WNBA. She would certainly be the number one pick in the WNBA draft. Joe Nelms has some information from us, from our audience, and a little sports card strategy show and tell about Caitlin Clark. Take it away, Joe. Hey, good morning, sports card strategy show fam. Um, I have been... Um, out of it for months dealing with some real life that just kicked me in the butt in December. Um, and I just wanted to talk about something really quick that I started working on um, early last summer uh, when I first got back into it. And um, we've all talked about Caitlin Clark. I mean, everybody knows about Caitlin Clark at this point. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is there's actually still money on the table out there if you want to go and grab it. Um, but I'm just going to set this up for you real quick. Um, when I first got back into it, Wimby was just the talk of everything. And like everybody else, I started going out buying a bunch of um, Bowman U basketball. And I pulled out two of these little Caitlin pink refractors. Had them graded, got one nine, got one ten, um, got them back, sold them both. After fees, I was able to buy seven more because I had posted those online and sold them both within 24 hours. Um, so I said, well, let's you know see what happens with the rest of this cash that I got back. Um, <clears throat> got those graded and walked away with five tens, two nines. Um, and also in the meantime, I had bought one purple mini diamond and one refractor. Well, the refractor got screwed up by either my pre-grader or PSA, um, scratches all over it when it came back in the case at a five. Um, so I scratched it out, took some ridiculous number of pictures and put a good description in there of the damage that was had. And I sold the damn damaged refractor in probably five minutes and made a five dollar profit on it beyond what i had had into it originally which is ridiculous <clears throat> and then the guy that bought it from me put it up for double what he bought it from me for two pictures near mint to mint um trying to scam somebody which just drives me nuts um so anyways i'm i'm not going to give you a bunch of exact numbers but in the end um, you know, again, this started with two pink refractors out of retail and, um, you know, I was into the grading for 200 bucks, um, had $40 more into the two additional cards that I bought after fees. I just walked away with about 1450 bucks on just a very, very small play, which honestly, that's the very first play I made after listening to this show. Um, I remember Lefty talking about it just one episode, again, sometime last year. But anyways, <clears throat> I want to talk, too, about the fact that there is still money out there. Her cards cost more now. Uh, but you can still get plenty of these pinks, refractors, and things like that in that $30 to $40 range. And, I mean, 
if you're all in at 50, 60, even 70 bucks, and you can still sell those things at nines for a hundred, you can still sell the tens for 250 plus, uh, there's still money to be made if you can go ahead and get this stuff done now, get it turned in, and get the stuff sold, you know, by the draft. Um, how quick can PSA turn it around? That's the question. Um, but I'm going to go back to one other item, and this is a question for everybody, and that's going to be um, return etiquette. That's what I want to talk about because with cards that I have been buying, I've been noticing a lot of damage on them, and for a while I didn't do anything about it. Um, and then recently I've just been getting a lot of these two-picture cards, description near mint to mint, and then they'll come off with dings, lots of scratches, stuff that is not going to be grade worthy, and I've been returning them. Um, so I asked the fam, what do you do when you're buying near mint to mint cards and you get them and that's not what was in the description? Are you doing returns or are you just sucking it up and eating it? Um, that's my question. Um, and then I had one other thing for Paul, and I know that you've been doing some some breaks and things like that, just trying to see if you can make profit off of rip and wax. So I'm gonna just put this bug in your ear. Um, I'm a huge Blackhawks fan. So Connor Bedard is something that I've just been out going nuts looking for. Um, and I could be completely lucky here, but I, I bought five tens and three, not 10 as in PSA 10, but 10 as in, 10 and I got five of those and I got three megas and out of that I pulled four of his young gun rookies and there's got to be money to be made these things can't be that rare um, with only 50 young guns in the set um, I just think and plus he's got a lot of inserts as well uh, it just parallels there's a ton of Connor Bedard and the stuff's going nuts um, so I'm curious if you wouldn't go and take a shot at getting a little bit of this and seeing what happens with it. Um, that's all I got for you today, but I had a couple of questions and just wanted to tell you, go out there while you still can and get a little bit of that Caitlin till next time. See you guys. Joe, great stuff, man. Love it. Appreciate the submission. Little Submission to kick off our nooffseason.com fam audience segment. I will answer Joe's question here. I would say, yes, I am big on the Connor Bedard Young Gun. I am not out there buying or ripping wax. I am not out there participating in breaks. To me, those are not sports card strategies. I have done the experimental, should you rip this piece, which I will probably continue to do, but that is solely for audience giveaways and premium member giveaways at nooffseason.com and then reporting on the results of the rip in content at nooffseason.com and at youtube.com slash Paul Hickey. It's super fun, uh, but with the Connor Bedard play, what I'm doing is I'm looking at buying the Young Guns Raw with the same thing I'm doing with the Wemby Prism. I believe that Bedard is the Wemby of the NHL. He's the Wemby of hockey. He's definitely going to be a hot seller for probably his entire career. He's like Connor McDavid 2.0 in terms of his hobby hype, not in terms of necessarily his style, his size or style of play on the ice, but in terms of hobby hockey hype, Connor Bedard is it right now. And that should not wear off. I think that uh, his young guns in PSA 10 and even PSA nine will always sell well. Thus, the raw selling really well right now. I just dropped an article at nooffseason.com last week that breaks it all down. I would highly encourage all of you to check that out. But yes, I am into Connor Bedard. I am not into ripping the Upper Deck Series 2. But uh, it's a great question, and I'm glad you're doing well on your Caitlin Clark. Let's go through the audience live chat. So Barry Siff got a quick, easy W of the weekend. 50% on an Angel Reese Raw Auto. Mr. T says, if it ain't listed, it ain't selling. Got to be in it to win it. List everything all the time. 
Jim Cunningham, what's up to you? After getting out of my Langford, six base autos in total made 20%. Win. Love it, Jim. Congratulations. Luke Menchel says, on Jackson Churio, rare cards are probably seeing larger demand and potentially a spike. And then there was a question in the live chat about when you should typically end your auctions. I believe it came in. Uh, yeah, TWS Sports Card says, what times do you all like to end your auctions and what days? And we got some great answers. Um, Shane Graham says Sunday, uh, well, in terms of Churio, he says Sunday was rock bottom for Churio-based PSA 10s, even after sweeping the Mets and playing well. But typically, uh, Shane Graham ends all of his auctions in the evening between 6 and 9 p.m. That's when I do it as well. And it depends on the day of the week uh, based on essentially the hype cycle and the schedule and what's going on per per player and per season. But I think that uh, I'm right there in lockstep with Shane on the 6 to 9 p.m.s. What's up to Rusty Emma Gart, Card Nerds, and the Sports Card Strategy Show fam? What is going on? Uh, Wilson Trosh says, I have a Jackson Cheerio Bowman Chrome first PSA 10. Best day to have your auction end. And I think we kind of answered that, although I think you would want to, in terms of day, look at the Brewers' schedule and see probably when there's maybe like a more of a marquee matchup against a bigger market team that may or may not be on national TV. I would I would look to do it that way uh, for Jackson Cheerio to see if maybe you can avoid that uh, rock bottom that Shane Graham talked about and Luke Menchel also talking about Churio, a straight correlation to pop count. The base prospect card is a pop uh, 5118 in PSA 10, which is definitely a uh, a large pop or a card of that nature. Mr. T chiming in saying rule number one, never lose money in sports cards. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one and the t-shirt should be we're better than Netflix. I think there might be both of them. Maybe we should do both of them and then See which one uh, gets the better response. Maybe that'll be a question of the day. I'll be wearing both t-shirts and then you pick one or the other. Jordan Houlette says, I'm doing sports card school when the school year ends. I'm a teacher and I can't give the time I need for it. So excited. Jordan, props to you. My wife is a teacher. Uh, props to all the teachers out there. We need good teachers in the world. So definitely, Jordan, thank you for you know being part of the nooffseason.com fam. And... Uh, or teaching our youth. I will be curious to see your feedback on sports card school from a teacher's perspective. Sergeant Slabs in the house. Win for the weekend. Had a bunch of Aaron Blanchlich cards who fought in the UFC main event Saturday, listed them in auctions, ending before her fight, cashed them in before she fought, and she lost. Okay, so that was a W because you listed them at the right time in terms of ending before the fight. I love it. Congrats on listing at the sell marker in an auction and cashing in. Shane Graham listed my ROM SI for kids card today, ending at the beginning of the Masters. Yeah, I'm pumped about that. Evan Ramos in the house. Paul is Hundo P. Gut feeling equals terrible and gambling. Yes. Barry Sif answering the question of the day says, buy it now. Have not had much success yet with auctions. Yet's the key word. Hoping my two Langford auto refractor PSA nines out of 499 hit five days left sitting at around $400. That's actually good. Um, most of the action doesn't happen until the last day and even the last several minutes of an auction. So Barry, I think you're going to do just fine. David to Jack eight to 9 PM on Sunday is when he ends his auction. So uh, appreciate that. K card says I do auctions, usually seven days, old money auctions work as long as they are timed at a peak viewing time. I've auctioned identical cards with different ending times, Saturday, Sunday, 3 PM start end time has been the best for me. Interesting. Greeny green agrees with me and says both depends on the card. Jordan Houlette is a buy it now or best offer person. Baseball card curmudgeon in the house. What's going on? Marty Neal, happy Monday. Just saw that 2024 Bowman release date is May 8th with pre-orders beginning tomorrow, April 2nd at noon Eastern. Hopefully that is not an April Fool's prank. DJ, DJ K, what's up? Says turnaround time is key in terms of grading. Even SGC is returning at three to four weeks instead of 10 days. 
eye roll. Oh no. TWS sports cards wants a link for the show that I mentioned earlier, which was the baseball card market update show. TWS, the best place to find that show is always going to be at nooffseason.com. Go to nooffseason.com. It's free. You'll see it. Baseball card market update right there. And you'll see every day I will be posting the daily market updates there. So I appreciate that. John Robinson asks Shane Graham. Skeeter says, Shane, have you thought about auctioning off that Bowman U now Caitlin Clark ending Sunday, especially if Iowa wins tonight? maybe even Friday night when she plays in the final four or the national championship game on Sunday. I want to read this off because I think it's relevant to the entire sports card strategy show audience. Jane says, John, I haven't thought about that yet. Just want to see if I get a parallel when it comes tomorrow, if it is 10 or less, it could be scary to let it ride in an auction. So again, depends on the card, depends on the player in terms of when you would want to end those auctions. All right, we're going to end today's show. With the wheel of names, we're going to announce the winner of the $250 Graybos gift card courtesy of Ryan Painter, who won that amazing Chet Holmgren NTRPA out of 25, valued at around $5,000 from Graybos in a break on Fanatics Live. Check out Graybos underscore cards on Instagram for all of their information and how you can link up with them where they're breaking. But Ryan Painter, won that card in a giveaway. It was a nooffseason.com sports card strategy show. Thank you giveaway from Graybos. Painter pulls that card and says, look, I'm going to pay it back to the nooffseason.com fam and I'm going to pay it back to Graybos by buying a $250 graybos.co gift card and then giving it away on the sports card strategy show to somebody from the fam. So what we did was we said, we set out a uh, a way for a premium member at nooffseason.com or someone who's not a premium member at nooffseason.com to enter into this giveaway. It was no purchase necessary. And so we got some names into a wheel of names here. We've got uh, Cardaholics, which is Barry Siff. We've got Bees Collectibles, which is Bo Belcher. And we've got, Jamie H, Old Money Racing. So uh, Barry and Bo have five entries each because they are premium members at nooffseason.com. Jamie H is not, but we love him, Old Money Racing. So he has one entry, so he's in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle this three times, and then I'm going to spin the wheel, and we're going to get our winner. And then I am going to email that winner the codes for the Graybos gift card, courtesy of Ryan Painter. We appreciate you, Ryan, and we appreciate you, Graybos. Here we go. Shuffle number one, shuffle number two, shuffle number three. I'm going to click to spin the wheel. We're going to see who wins our Wheel of Names giveaway. It's going to be Barry Siff. Barry Siff wins the Wheel of Names. We have a winner, everybody. Congratulations to Barry Siff. He has won a... $250 $250 gift card to graybos.co. Barry, I'm going to email you that code so that you can redeem it and support Graybos. A few more comments in the live chat before I hit you guys with the outro on this Monday, April 1st. We didn't have anyone request my April Fool's Day prank story, so I'm not going to tell it. Luke Menchel, eBay return continued. Uh, He says, I'm not a big fan of returns on eBay. If you have a question about condition, ask the seller for more images. Most sellers will take additional pictures. If asked, condition is very subjective. I've had eBay customers return cards after hype cycles, trying to flip for a profit and sticking me as a seller with a card with no hype cycle. That in response to Joe Nelms. Appreciate that, Luke Menchel. Andrew Page, new name in the live chat. Good to see you. W, graded a Lankford base Chrome Prospect Auto and got a PSA 10. Sold it on auction last Thursday for $1,200 and the buyer paid immediately. Love it. K Cards thinks Connor Bedard will be going down. Interesting. But K Cards did well selling Ellie De La Cruz blueprint cards, selling for about $12 raw. Barry Siff pumped about the win. And Evan Ramos says, excellent excellent show, Paul. Always enjoy it. Really appreciate all of your support. Thanks to the entire nooffseason.com 
Fam, fam, whether you're a premium member at NoOffSeason.com or not, I love you. Everybody, we'll see you again soon. Happy April Fool's Day, everybody. Don't get fooled out there. Thanks so much for being here with us on the Sports Card Strategy Show. To connect with us further, please subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Paul Hickey. Please also give us a follow on Instagram at Sports Card Strategy and on X at No Off Season Card. We also have a Discord that you could join at sportscardstrategy.com. Everyone, I'm Paul Hickey. For the rest of us here at NoOffSeason.com, have a great day. We'll see you again soon.